that's the only thing for me. My body, health, and the family faith. The moon is connected to my emotions. So that the moon is connected to my emotions. The, the, the moon is how I respond and react. What's the deal, good people? Eric Taylor, T2UC Big 3 Astrology. And we are talking about the Leo full moon on February 5th, 1.28 p.m. Eastern. So that's 10.28 a.m. Pacific. And adjust to your neck of the woods. Ah, the sun and the moon. Aquarius sun and the Leo full moon in opposition at 16 degrees. This is the fifth consecutive full moon at 16 degrees. Kind of deep. Right, and that equals 16 is seven. And we're also in a seven universal year. So we're talking about the Leo full moon, which is the royal number 23, right? Coming from your heart, the heart, ch heart chakra. And true black moon Lilith is there too. We're gonna go inside, I'm gonna show you the chart. It's a Taurus rising. So this Leo full moon is in the fourth house. And yes, you have Mars and Gemini making a trine to the Aquarius sun and a sextile to the Leo moon. We have a T-square with Uranus, Uranus in Taurus. And the Taurus ruler, Venus, exalted in Pisces. Pisces squaring Mars. Yeah, the Venus-Mars square. And most like a conjunction with, um, well, you do have the conjunction with Mercury and Pluto and Capricorn, okay? But you have uh, the sun 10 degrees away from Saturn and Aquarius. So there's a lot of energy, but this energy is really about coming from your heart chakra, trusting your intuition, right? It's the full moon. It's illuminating something. Well, it's illuminating maybe that being brave and courageous is to be celebrated, the job's not done yet. We got to keep pushing, keep our high vibrations going from our heart chakra, connecting in the root chakra, right? Your third eye. And being, being the spiritual intuitive genius, right? The Venus and Pisces makes this energy kind of calm down and be, you know, less dynamic and dramatic. <laughs> there could be some verbal tensions, but I think overall, this can be a very healing moon. Remember high vibration of Leo? The spotlight, generosity, a pure heart. I think that's important at this time. And, you know, having the sun in Aquarius, right? It's in that second deacon. This is that Aquarius Gemini deacon at 16 degrees. So... There's a lot of intelligent conversation. There's a lot of talk about science and computers and technology, crypto and the stock market. Still have Uranus in the North Node and Taurus. So, you know, we have to remember that we have to trust our intuition and follow our hearts. Be the intuitive, creative genius. This is a good time to create, play some music, celebrate, you know, maybe not host a party, but just, you know, put on your favorite jams and, and write and create and meditate and pray and know that God is with you on this journey. We chose to be born at this time, so we're built for it. We're ready for everything. OK. We're even ready for the bugs and nature. OK. The, the, the bug is just here. It just bothered me. He wants to be in the video. You know? But we're going to go inside. Look at this chart. This T-square with Uranus and the sun and moon is pretty interesting. And squares are opportunities for growth. And we have to find, through our hearts, the right groups that we want to connect with. The social networks, the friends. And if people make your heart not feel good, then you have to be willing to let them go. Remember, the part of fortune in this chart is, we'll show you, in Scorpio in the seventh house. So truth and investigation can be part of your financial blessings. 
the emotional intelligence, the part of fortune in Scorpio. <clears throat> but we also have to find balance on Sunday. Ceres, the goddess of harvest in the sixth house of Libra for work or daily routine. So put some balance in your life this weekend. It is Leo full moon. Let's go inside and we'll continue and break down the rest of this chart. All right. T2UC Big 3 Astrology. Happy full moon. All right, later. So it's the Leo full moon chart. And forgive me, ever since uh, the last Mercury retrograde, my um, astro.com has been zoomed out. But we'll look at the entire chart. As you see, <clears throat> the Leo full moon, right, is really magical because it is in the fourth house at 16 degrees. Okay. And we have this Taurus rising. And you have the Uranus and North Node. And obviously, that Leo moon is opposing the sun in Aquarius. Okay? And you see it's pretty close to Saturn. So, with this chart with the Taurus rising, obviously, you know, the ninth house having the midheaven um, and Mercury conjunct the midheaven and the conjunction to Pluto, the ninth house is about unlocking our fortune our wisdom, our beliefs, our philosophy, our higher learning. And, you know, this is an energy where a lot of truth can be revealed. And, you know, with this being in Capricorn, there could be a lot of truth about international business, politics, power people, right? Because this Aquarius season is the last time without Pluto and Aquarius for the birthdays, okay? And, you know, having this trine, well, the Mars and Gemini sextile to the Leo moon, okay? And that Mars is in trine to the sun in the 10th house. So I think overall there's a, a deep energy about communicating what our real values are, okay? And being sort of assertive and optimistic. Remember, Mars rules Aries and Scorpio. And what do we have? The Chiron and Jupiter and Aries in the 12th house. Our hidden talent is to share our wisdom on this full moon, to share our beliefs and philosophies. And part of that comes through unlocking the truth of Mercury, Midheaven, and Capricorn in the ninth house. You know, this is this intuitive genius energy. When you have the North Node and Uranus on the Ascendant and Taurus, wow. So you know the chart ruler is Venus, which is exalted in Pisces. So there is that love and appreciation I was talking about earlier about the collective. And with that being in the 11th house, of astrology and the internet and, you know, humanity, philanthropic work, nonprofit. You know, we really have to think about this Leo full moon screaming at us about have gratitude and love everything, right? Book of Ephesians, agape Christ-like love, okay? You know, in this opposition, Leo and Aquarius, it's like, who are you from your heart in terms of being brave and courageous? And then who are you a part of a group and the collective in public, the career, the public image, the workplace, work environment? Are you around the right people? And do you value these friendships and relationships? Is there a spiritual, creative, imaginative connection between the groups and organizations and the friends that you have, whether it be through the internet, that's why I have Astrological Coffee Talk with Eric, or just with the people you're, you're connecting with, okay? Don't let the, the, the Mars and Gemini, you know, really squaring this Venus and Pisces, 
you know, create a disruption to the positive energy around these groups. This full moon, now low vibration of the Leo, can get a little arrogant, could get a little overly dramatic. And, oh, look at me. Leo wants the attention, tension, fix. It can be very stubborn. Fix fire sign. Mars and Gemini in the second house. The second house is what? Your speech. There can be very verbally assertive, aggressive speech coming out during this time. And Uranus, let's be honest, and Taurus, you know, doesn't like being there. It's a home in Aquarius, and it's making this T-square, right? You see that from the first house to the fourth house of the Leo moon, right? And the 10th house, you know, to the Aquarius sun. So there is opportunity for growth, but there's also opportunity for some separation. Doesn't mean it can be permanent, but, you know, just really try to stay in your heart chakra during this full moon in gratitude, love, appreciation. But notice this part of fortune that I was talking about in Scorpio um, in the seventh house of the other half. But it's the emotional, deep intimacy, the connection that can bring the spiritual and financial blessings in a business partnership, in your negotiations, and with friends, and with your spouse, okay? So take a hint from that to this ten, ninth house of the Pluto-Mercury. What do you believe? What are your beliefs? And maybe you need to Learn and communicate and transform your beliefs. This is transformation. This is occult knowledge. And the house, ninth house of Capricorn, right? So maybe it's start, it's time to start investigating the truth about <coughs> the political system, the structures, the government, and see are you learning about the transformation? And really, are you learning about who has the power at this time? And does it serve you? Does it benefit you? Okay. And that's opposing, right, the cancer third house. How do we solve problems and dilemmas with palace? So it's a beautiful energy. You know, I'm not going to break everything down to the greatest detail, but I think overall the theme is, is the fifth full moon at 16 degrees, which is seven. So it's all about the compassion, the empathy, the intuition, the spirituality. We're in a seven year, right? And Leo is associated with 23 and it's vibrating from your heart. Okay. So really understand this fifth house of creativity you got Virgo. Okay. So you want to be precise, analytical, logical about creating your new venture, your own business. And this series, The Goddess of Harvest and Libra of our health and daily routine, it's really speaking to this Leo full moon. Have balance in your diet, right? Be harmonious and peaceful. You know, and um, break bread with others. Okay. So that's a nice full moon. But I think, you know, it does illuminate things. And it's going to illuminate some things about the power systems and structures. And who, who we are as an individual being brave and courageous from our hearts, the intuitive genius, moving forward and moving forward with some level of discipline and independence, right? Being that genius and knowing that you are ready for the age of Aquarius. But you have to follow your heart. Be brave, be bold, and know you are regal, you are royal. You are Venus and Pisces love. Okay. So, interesting chart. 
And I think it, it speaks to some meditation, to finding the guru to heal you, to heal your Chiron wounds. Right? And you see Jupiter's wife, Juno, the asteroid, they're both in Aries now. So, this is a time to heal and find some, maybe find your true love to see who are you going to enter this new Pluto and Aquarius, right? No more millennials, Gen Z, Alpha. This is the beta. Who are you going to love? Initiate it. Speak it. Claim it. <laughs> the energy says it's on you for this full moon. The T-square, you have got to be the one that innovates the growth and the truth, right? Pushing the envelope, breaking the social norms. It's part of your mission and destiny, okay? And Uranus is ruler, Aquarius in the 10th house, the top of the chart. It's time to be the individual independent leader that vibrates from your heart, all right? T2UC Big 3 Astrology, enjoy this Leo full moon. And it's Aquarius season, so take advantage of my birth chart sale. You 16 degrees Aquarian folks, <coughs> this is the second deacon. So there's going to be a lot of uh, communication in public, okay? A lot of things being spoken about, ideas, thoughts, the future, all this AI technology, all these layoffs. What does it all mean? And how can you solve problems and solutions? Right? <laughs> Put this new world in order. <laughs> Not their order. All right? So, <clears throat> remember, Lilith is down here, right? Not in a, a, a conjunction, but Lilith in Leo in the fourth house. When you're at home meditating, you got to go from the root chakra to the heart chakra and trust the download you're receiving from God and source energy. Yeah, that's the, the royal star energy. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, just, just be blessed. Be smart. Be safe. But be creative and vibrate from your heart. This is how we leave the 3D to go to the 4D and 5D. It's through the heart chakra and connect through the root, your power, the Kundalini energy. Get your breath work done. Be motivated to heal your wounds from your childhood and take care of your subconscious mind. Okay? Now Juno's there to tell you, you gotta heal your inner child to have that true self love, period. All right? Hit me up, taylor2coaching at gmail.com. I got you. God bless you all. Enjoy the Leo full moon. Later.